It is really a joy for us to be here with you this morning. Oftentimes, either Mike or I will go and speak in churches. It's not typical for us, for our whole family to travel, um, to speak in churches, but I was concerned about the weather and driving potentially in snow, so Mike and the girls came too, so just forgive us for the 21-month-old, if she's little raucous this morning. <laughs> I never know what it's gonna be like. <clears throat> anyway. Mike and I have served as the executive directors of Children of Promise since 2019. Um, and previous to that, we had been serving in missions for uh, missions and missions education since 2004. The majority of our time overseas was spent in Tanzania, first as missionaries and then after that as regional coordinators for the Church of God in Africa. Um, we had the honor of working with Cook, Kirk Bookout for our first two years of ministry with Children of Promise, and I, he has spoken so highly and with such love and adoration of this congregation um, since, since we've known him. He really appreciates you and really appreciates the ministry of this church. It's a joy for us to be here with you today. This morning, we're gonna take a trip through scripture to see God's heart and his ideal and his deep love and concern for caring for the poor. Um, and I'm gonna share some Children of Promise stories along the way. Is there a direction I need to point this? Oh, there we go. <clears throat> God's concept of Jubilee is something that he laid out in Leviticus 25. You, re you may remember that uh, Leviticus takes place when the Israelites have escaped from slavery in Egypt and they are wandering in the desert. They haven't yet reached the promised land that God has promised them. The year of Jubilee is also referred to in scripture as the year of the Lord's favor. It was to take place every 50 years and there was to be a full economic reset Debts were to be forgiven and canceled. Indentured servants were to be set free. Land that had been sold because of economic hardship was returned to its original owner. Think of what that might have meant for the Israelites as they were roaming in the desert. They didn't have any land. They were nomads. They themselves were slaves who had been set free. God's ideal of Jubilee resets everything. It makes sure that those who have fallen on hard times over the past 50 years would once again have a seat at the table and have opportunity. In Jubilee, we see the concept of wholeness, of completeness, of shalom, and of peace. It encompasses every aspect of life. And it is our calling at Children of Promise to make wholeness possible for kids around the world. Over the years, Children of Promise has um, taken on different looks and taken on different uh, focuses. And right now, our focus is this idea of making wholeness possible. Making wholeness possible. It's our calling to make wholeness possible. At Children of Promise, the way we express the concept of Jubilee is, and to strive to make wholeness possible for kids around the, around the world is through what we call the core four. Through child sponsorship, children are receiving nutrition, education, health care, and discipleship through their local Church of God congregation. They're being cared for in holistic ways ensuring that they have healthy bodies, healthy minds, healthy spirits, and healthy relationships. It's helping them to run the race that God has before them and making sure that each one has a seat at the table. The first of our core four is nutrition. <clears throat> About a year ago, a Children of Promise team of staff and sponsors went to Zambia to visit and interview sponsored children. Eastern Zambia has been particularly hard hit with cycles of drought and flooding over the past several years, which decimates the crops of families who depend on farmland just to survive. 
Those who are living in poverty are disproportionately affected and have a more difficult time recovering from climate-related natural disasters. Many adults have been forced to leave their hometown in search for work so that they can send money back to their families. But not so for sponsored children. This is Grace and Chizola. They are just two of the sponsored children in Petauke, Zambia, whose families have been able to stay together because of monthly, monthly food supplies that they receive through sponsorship. Nutrition makes wholeness possible. Zambia, this currently is being really hard hit by a cholera outbreak in southern Zambia. And in fact, schools nationwide are closed right now because of the cholera outbreak. Um, our director in Zambia, Mylis Ndau, recently wrote and asked for some additional help because the, the famine is bad right now and, and with uh, so much illness, it's been very hard. The idea of Jubilee continues to weave through scripture in Isaiah 61, verses 1 and 2. This passage falls in a section of scripture that's talking about comfort for Israel, everlasting deliverance, everlasting judgment. In short, this section of scripture is about justice. So I want to read Isaiah 61, 1 and 2. It's up on the screen. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn. Do you hear the themes of Jubilee in this passage? Good news, freedom, release, the Lord's favor. We as New Testament people recognize this as a prophecy about Jesus, but it was also a modern day prophecy to the Israelites in the Old Testament times about their future release from Babylonian captivity. Once again, God is showing his deep concern and love for the poor and the marginalized. This is Jonathan. Jonathan is an Ecuadorian man who was sponsored when he was just a child. His family was extremely hardworking and also very poor. They couldn't afford to send Jonathan to school. But thankfully, because of sponsorship, Jonathan was able to get a great education. And it became apparent very early on in his education that he was incredibly bright. Jonathan completed high school and went on to university with the help of his sponsor where he studied engineering. Jonathan has since established a successful career as an engineer and has invented agricultural technology. He holds a patent in the Ecuadorian government for this technology that he created. Imagine what his community, his country would have lost out on if Jonathan had not had a seat at the table and not had the opportunity to use the intellect and the creativity that God had planted in him. Education makes wholeness possible. So we started in Leviticus with the introduction of Jubilee, God's ideal, and then in Isaiah we see Jubilee reiterated through a prophecy about justice. And as we continue to move through scripture, we come to Luke chapter 4. Jesus has just spent 40 days fasting in the desert. And this is where Luke chapter 4 picks up. Listen again for God's ideal of Jubilee. Jesus went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. 
Jesus is announcing not only that he brings good news, but that he is good news. The Jesus movement is a jubilee movement. His early ministry was an announcement of the jubilee. Jesus came to make wholeness possible. This is Ray Jack. He's a Filipino who lives in a very rural part of the Philippines where the two room homes are built up on stilts because each year the heavy rains flood the community. There's no sewer system in Rajek's community, so when the flood waters rise, raw sewage is carried along with it. When Rajek was 13 years old, he developed leptospirosis, which is a really dangerous bacterial infection that he contracted through exposure to rat urine. He went into kidney failure. For many people in Rajek's community, leptospirosis is a certain death sentence because there's no extra money for health care. But because of sponsorship, he was able to receive the treatment he needed, and it saved his life. Rajek is now 17 years old and has experienced a full recovery. The third aspect of our core four is health care. For most sponsored children, this means receiving hygiene items and going to the doctor and to the dentist when they're sick. But for sponsored children like Rajek, it may actually mean life or death. Health care makes wholeness possible. Last year, we celebrated, Children of Promise celebrated 30 years of making wholeness possible for kids around the world. Mike and I have had the joy of being at the helm for the last four and a half years, and it's been an incredible opportunity for us to build on a really strong foundation. Children of Promise was started 30 years ago with such an incredibly strong foundation. 31 years into this ministry, it's so exciting to see the generational changes that are taking place because of sponsorship. The woman on the left is Pastor Dorothy. I know that uh, this church as a congregation sponsors a child in Myanmar, and Dorothy is the national leader of the church in Myanmar. She's been the national leader for decades. She's known to be a strong, kind, godly woman who leads her people really, really well. One of the young people that she had an incredible impact on is the young woman in the middle. Her name is Tida. As a girl, Tida would sneak out of her Buddhist home on Sunday mornings and find her way to Dorothy's church. She learned about and experienced firsthand the love of Jesus through Pastor Dorothy's ministry. Tida's parents were not happy about their daughter going to church, and she often suffered physical harm because of it. But she continued to go. After some time, Tida became a sponsored child and continued to flourish under Dorothy's loving leadership. Oftentimes when children are first sponsored, they don't know how to answer the question, what do you want to be when you grow up? Because they haven't really thought about it before. When you're struggling to survive from day to day, um, it's difficult to dream about the future. But we find that after some time in the program, sponsored children have the capacity to dream about what the future might look like. Some answer, I want to be a teacher, I want to be a pilot, I want to be a pastor, I want to be a nurse, I want to be a soldier. When Tida was asked that question, she said, I want to be like Dorothy. When she dreamed about her own future, she wanted to become like the woman who had exemplified Jesus to her. Tida is now a pastor herself and leading her own congregation in Myanmar. This is what discipleship looks like. Discipleship is making wholeness possible. Dream with me about the little girl on the right. Also a sponsored child in Myanmar, think about what her life might be like after another 30 years. What will she become? What impact will her life of wholeness have on her family, on her community, on her country? 
Myanmar is going through a very difficult time right now. They're in the midst of civil war and has been going on for coming up on, uh, I think coming up on three years. Maybe it's coming up on two. I've lost track of the time a little bit. It's been very difficult for them to, for the leaders to travel around to visit all of the sponsored children, but they're able to send money for sponsorship benefits for food and for, um, for health care through mobile money and get reports regularly from parents and from um, area leaders. But it's been very, very difficult. So pray for Dorothy as she leads the church there. Pray for the pastors. Pray for the families. Um, there, it's been a hard couple of years. This brings us to today. Jubilee 2.0. If Jesus' movement was a jubilee movement, oops, and we are followers of Jesus, shouldn't we be all about the jubilee as well? Shouldn't we be about making wholeness possible? What does it look like for us to be carriers of the good news? What does it look like for us to participate with God in people experiencing true freedom and true healing? What does it look like to make sure that those who have been overlooked and marginalized have an opportunity and have a seat at the table so that they can also live out the calling that God has placed on their lives? What does it look like for us to be Jubilee people? I'm excited to be here this weekend as you focus on missions and opportunities for you to participate in what God is doing um, in making wholeness possible for your community and around the world. <clears throat> I encourage you to really open your heart and be ready to respond in faith to what God is prompting you to do and how he's prompting you to participate. I want to mention a few ways that you can continue to or expand your partnership with Children of Promise. Um, of course, you can sponsor a child. I brought several profiles of children uh, who are, whose profiles are out on the table in the, in the entryway. They are waiting, for, waiting to be matched with a long-term sponsor. The majority of our sponsorships are $32 a month, which equals $384 a year. Our newest initiative is called the GAP Fund. Donations to the GAP Fund can be given in any amount and at any frequency. We use these funds uh, to fill in the gaps that, ch that sponsored children often face. Um, currently we have, actually now we have four aspects of the GAP Fund. The first is pre-sponsorship. So when we receive as an application from a, a national director for a child, Instead of having to wait until we can match them with a sponsor, we're able to use the GAP funds to get them sponsorship benefits right away. Sometimes a sponsor has to drop sponsorship for some reason, and so we're able to use the GAP fund to fill in that gap for continuity of care because we don't want the children to not receive the, the sponsorship benefits. We're able to use the GAP fund to provide scholarship opportunities for children once they finish their high school career to either study a vocation or go on to university. And just this December, we started a new aspect of the GAP fund, which we use to seed fund business, small business ideas for graduates of our program who want to start a small business in their community. We're able to provide funds for them to get their business up and running. Third there, the um, Making It All Happen Fund is our, supports our organization as a whole. Um, and finally, you can travel with us. We have trips all year long visiting sponsored children. Um, the trips are highly relational. We spend time with the children. We spend time with the directors and the volunteers, really as an encouragement and a shot of adrenaline for them. Um, it helps you to gain a deeper impact, a deeper understanding of the impact of sponsorship we spend time one-on-one -on -one with each of the sponsored children. I'm leading a trip to the Dominican Republic coming up in March. I'm still looking for people to join. So if you wanna hop with me and go someplace warm, let's go, let me know. Um, but you can find more information about all of our trips at childrenofpromise.global slash trips. And finally, we are very intentional about telling stories of wholeness all year long. We don't want 
for you to have to wait until Children of Promise comes back on a Sunday morning for you to hear about what God is doing through you and through, uh, through the ministry of Children of Promise. So follow us on social media. It's Facebook, uh, um, Instagram, we have a YouTube channel. We're putting videos out all the time. Um, and you can also sign up for our newsletter. I think that's all I have to share. Okay, sure. <laughs> you yeah, came no. up at just the right time. Okay. <laughs> okay. Are okay. there any questions? Do you want? I don't know. Are there any questions? And then you'll be staying. Yes, you'll be I'll there. Be yeah, yeah. So if but we thank do, you, we... thank you, thank you for making wholeness possible for children, for their families. The the impact doesn't stop with the child. The impact. Um, um, seeps out into the family, into the community, into the church, and really impacts their entire country. So thank you for partnering with God to make wholeness possible for kids around the world. Amen. 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 Amen.